What's up? It's Paul from Guitar World. And as you may be aware or not, Summer NAMM has been canceled. But that doesn't mean there's any shortage of new products and launches. So because you can't be there, we're going to bring all that stuff to you. So let's dig in and check it out. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Blue Mics for providing this Yeti X microphone, the boom stand, all of this to make me sound incredible on my end. We're honored to have Paul Holcomb from Bog Street Picks. Let's hear what he has to say about his Act Series and Leap Series Picks. All right, well, I'm very excited to have Paul Holcomb here from Bog Street Picks. He has graced us with his presence to tell us about his company. And uh, right off the bat, I just want to get right into it. Two questions are at the top of my head is, tell me about the name Bog Street, and two, why did you feel the need to reinvent the pick wheel? When I started the company, I was traveling back and forth to Washington, D.C., and um, a lot of the feedback that I got um, on the early prototypes was from street performers, uh, people busking, performers literally performing in the, in the streets and the subways and whatnot. Uh, so I wanted to kind of combine that, um, that spirit, that, that, that street cred um, with uh, the bog part of it came from a combination of uh, I'm from Florida and the swamp. Uh, kind of, I guess, is in my blood, if you will, in some ways. And um, and the, the the city kind of reminds me of this urban swamp. So Bog Street was really kind of a, a combination of, of those things and kind of personified the, the spirit that I wanted, you know, for the for the company. Um, and uh, and I thought it would be fun from a, from a branding standpoint to kind of embellish on these swamp creatures and the, the diversity of, of the creatures that are in the swamp and uh, and and com and kind of. Uh, take the, the individual individual sort of experiences that different musicians have and we all come together around the same kind of common love you know for uh, for guitar and, and for music and so it's kind of a long-winded answer but that's essentially where the name came from i dig that so tell me a little bit why why you felt the need to you know reinvent this the idea of a pick you know so my, my background is in design not necessarily product design although i have a little bit of experience in product design um, but I kind of came, this whole thing came about really from me trying to solve my own problem. So, like I said, at the time I was traveling back and forth, um, I would take a guitar with me, uh, cause I was, um, I, 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 you know, about three or four years ago, I decided I wanted to get serious about learning the guitar. So, um, so holding on to a, a guitar pick was one of the problems that I had rotating and dropping and dropping in the sound hole. And so I was looking for a product out there to solve my problem and i knew that a lot of people were kind of like self-solving their the problem whether they're, they're sticking something on it or they're doing different different things to a pick to, to give it the grip they need or you know they just got used to it after dozens of years of playing um so in any event though i uh, i didn't find anything in the market that that wasn't sort of gimmicky um and um so i went through i used the, the design experience that i have to kind of walk through a design methodology that's basically it starts with a hypothesis you know here's a problem a hypothesis is we can solve the problem this way uh create a prototype and then get feedback on the prototype and then um, iterate and um so i i essentially essentially applied that methodology with the uh, musicians that uh, that I you know encountered because uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to just solve my problem I want to see is this a problem that other people have so in any event um, that's where the you know the genesis of the uh, the leap series pick the larger you know three sided pick came from um, probably about 25 30 different iterations of prototypes of that it actually started very big that's a big pick it started much bigger and got smaller over time <laughs> Um, but that's the one we ran. Yeah, let me uh, let me quickly just show that. So this was the genesis of your Kickstarter, and you, I, I, personally, I love the packaging; is just great, and love the Bog Street mascot as well. Uh, and so you started off with a rhythm and a lead pick, but I'll I'll pull out the lead, and basically, yeah. So I'm sure you can, as you can see, it's a it's it's quite a large pick. But you know, as you get it in your hand and you sort of grip it, it suddenly you know all that mass. Kind of disappears, so it actually becomes quite ergonomic, as it as it's called, you know, the three-sided ergonomic pick. So, so I see it, and so it's certainly something 
as you'd mentioned before, like you were worried about, you know, losing your pick. This one, you definitely won't lose it. You really got a, a, a very firm grip on this one, even right. thanks to the hole and the indentation, the raised in, indents over here as well, right? Yep. That all went into your design. Right, right. They're all part of a, a sort of trial and error process of different prototypes. And again, it's, you know, one thing I've learned about trying to create an ideal guitar pick is that playing styles are so different and you can't make a pick for large hands and small hands and sweaty hands and dry hands and you know uh all the different you know pick grips and, and whatnot but if you can you know if you can solve a problem for a segment of the of the population that hasn't already been solved you know then then that's a win so really what i discovered with the leap series design um kickstarter went well is a lot of people were willing to try it because it's very different and you know one one thing about guitar players is you know we like to buy every guitar pick <laughs> concept we see just to give it a give it a give it a try right but that that design really really resonated with people with hand impairments or who had, you know, arthritis or, you know, were struggling like I was, you know, holding on a guitar pick, but it didn't necessarily resonate with uh, everybody. So a lot of the more experienced players who got used to using very small picks and barely exposing anything, you know, might've struggled with uh, pinch harmonics or certain techniques that they're used to using with a, you know, with a smaller pick. So going back to the you know, design methodology, you know, kind of leveraging that sort of core competency of, you know, creating this sort of like ergonomic, you know, carving out this space in, um, in, in this like, it's like grip friendly, you know, um, design. Um, I felt like we had, we kind of had a solution for one end of the spectrum, you know, like I said, the hand impairments and people that were really struggling to hold on to a pick. Now I wanted to introduce something that the other end of the spectrum, something that may not have been as aggressive in the grip solution, but um, introduce something unique, some kind of um, a grip, you know, a form factor that basically, you know, was sort of, you know, outside, outside of the box, you know, thinking from the yeah. conventional yeah. guitar pick design. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel that you that 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 was sort of the you know when we had a lot because I had a lot of fun with my colleague Alan for our cooking with sound episode when we kind of you know had our first impressions of this pick and and I agree with you I think this initial uh, launch really addressed a certain segment of the, the guitar playing audience as you as you mentioned so people who had who had difficulty holding picks or maybe they're impaired or anything and this certainly you know, ticks all those boxes. And what's cool, of course, too, is the fact that you have three different thicknesses and, and sort of uh, beveled uh, and shapes here to address, you know, every, you know, every player there is. And so really the, the question is whether is the pick that big for you? And, but then you addressed maybe the other part of the of the guitar playing audience, which I which I believe is to be a bigger the bigger audience bit, by in, by launching your brand new series, which are the Axe series of guitar picks, which I think me and Alan automatically gravitated to, which is really I think this is sort of where you kind of honed in the craft. Which so these are really interesting. So it's essentially the same idea, um, uh, and uh, with the Axe cut, which is I'm sorry. The axe cut is the orange. Then here is the axe blade, which is the red. Um, so you have two different areas that are uh, uh, that are the that are sort of that tra a traditional uh, have a little bit of flex, and then you have more of the pointed. Then you have one side, which is a pointed area, which is then it's for the speed demons. And so it comes down to which which one you're interested. And then finally, you have the the battle axe picks over here, which is Definitely for the shredder types, all three beveled edges, uh, a more th a thicker pick, and uh, and I guess you know this was a lot of fun to use. And but again, the same idea, which you as you had mentioned before, it, there's that comfort level, the grippiness. Uh, so this was uh, so. Tell me a little bit more about just uh, something that I, maybe I've missed here on your idea behind these picks. So that so those three uh, family of the, the Axe series kind of represents a uh, again um, kind of an introduction of a, of a of a new paradigm, if you will, or a new model into that space. Um, and now the sort of expansion from there 
is it goes back to that feedback loop that we've got. So there's essentially three designs in, you know, in, in front of you. And I've had people ask me, do you have a thicker version of this or a thinner version of this or whatever? So, um, so the next sort of, so we have, I've got uh, like 10 new molds being created right now that are variations of those picks. So by the time this, um, you know, this airs, there'll, there'll probably be, you know, three more or so uh, e each of those uh, families that uh, represent a few different things, thicker and thinner models. And then also those three models have uh, an edge to edge texture, which is kind of um, different. Um, whether it's good or bad is sort of individual preference. Uh, if you're playing metal and, and, and you, you know, you're, you've got some distortion, you don't mind getting um, a, a bit of uh, volume out of your pick, um, then that edge to edge texture might be something you like. Um, but we also have a lot of, you know, jazz players and, and uh, players, you know, the feedback that want a very smooth edge. Um, so the next versions of that pick that are coming out have very, you know, clean edge. And I call that like a dirty edge. So those three picks have that sort of edge to edge texture. And then the, the new picks will have a clean, you know, edge. And we're making some minor improvements on the, on the form um, that, that, you know, things that we've just learned from testing. And you just can't, you can't learn everything before you release a, you release a product. But, you know, I think that if, uh, if, if a company, if I can say that we do anything different, it's that we listen. And we take feedback very serious and we, um, you know, iterate based on a strong feedback loop that we have, you know, with, with customers. And, uh, and that's, that's sort of our you know, the premise for the, for the company. That's great. Yeah. I, th I think that's what I admire most is the fact that you're, you hear you're a company that is, that really values your customer's input. And, and, in, and in essence here, you are building a really great, you know, innovative pick here and, and that definitely shows. Do you envision the company doing and uh, adding anything else besides picks to this box street since you got a really kind of a hip name there? So it's kind of, um, I mean, that was the original idea was that Bog Street, you know, our sort of, you know, uh, banner, our, our, our mission is to enhance the guitar playing experience. So that's a very broad, you know, mission. And I feel like there's a lot of, you know, room and product innovation for guitar playing that uh, that can be done and i've actually um explored everything from capos to um guitar stands to you know all kinds of different things but i feel like um one reason we want to kind of carve out a niche in the pick space is twofold uh, number one it's the least complex from a manufacturing process standpoint there's no moving part no electronics um and and uh, i feel like there's plenty of um opportunity to, um, you know, to innovate there. Um, and we may just stay there in that, in that wheelhouse for a while. Um, but, um, but it's, it, the other things are on the radar, but it's, it's, I just want to do one thing really, really well right now. And so that's kind of the space. And I feel like it's, it's important to focus on that because the other thing is that that's where if you use a pick, um, you, you know, you're, you're is creating that contact between you and the instrument and it becomes an extension of the player. So, um, to the degree that we do that well, um, we'll, we'll kind of determine our success, you know, in my opinion. Um, and, and that's why I want to kind of focus on that space for, for the time being. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Paul. And, and also the other great thing of course, is these are made in the USA. So that's a real, very, very cool thing here. Uh, so, Thank you, Paul, once again from Bog Street, uh, telling us all about these brand new picks from the Leap series, the three-sided ergonomic pick, to the brand new Axe series of guitar picks. I would urge anyone who has never heard of it to certainly check these things out. They are an innovation and, and something that a lot of guitar players, I might think, would gravitate towards. So thank you for, for being here. Thank all you, right. Paul. Thanks again, Paul. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right.